Today we're going to talk about limiting, what it is, what it isn't, and we're going to show you how to use one along the way. But first, the title screen. <laughs> Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode. I'm Kenny Monsters with Last Laugh Studios. If you haven't already done it, tap that like button and subscribe. Today we'll be working in FL Studio for our example. According to the definition I found here on my phone, it says that limiting is defined as any process by which the amplitude of a signal is prevented from exceeding a predetermined value. Wah, 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 wah. I can show you better than I can tell you. So let's just jump in FL Studio so I can show you a picture of a waveform real quick. The amplitude of the signal refers to something called a peak, which are these sharp spikes you can see in the top of the waveform here. A limiter basically controls the peak level of your audio signal, and when set properly, the limiter prevents your audio signal from exceeding the peak level that you've set. Let's look at an example of a limiter plug-in for reference. This is the L3 Low Latency Ultra Maximizer by Waves. It's pretty much one of my favorites. The out ceiling knob is set to 0 dB by default. This means that the peak level of my signal won't exceed 0 dB. If I set the out ceiling to minus 1 dB, oops, I'm going past it, then the audio signal won't go above minus 1 dB, and so on. Now there's a lot more to this limiter, but I'm going to keep it simple for now. Limiters do have limits though. You see what I did there, right? The harder you make a limiter work, the more squashed the incoming audio signal is going to start to sound, and then the mix just falls apart. Whole entire frequencies will start to disappear right before your eyes. Or is it ears? It's definitely ears. And usually the first frequency to suffer is the low end. The reason for this is that the low end is usually the loudest part of your mix. By the way, the loudest parts of your audio signal are also referred to as transients or peaks. Mixing engineers like to use confusing terminology like this from time to time. I don't really know why. I guess it's probably because they want to pretend like they're smarter and they're not really struggling to make the monthly payment on that big-ass SSL mixing board they have or something. You know, the one that you took the selfie by earlier. Now that we've established what a limiter is and what it does, we need to establish what a limiter isn't and what it doesn't do. A limiter is not an excuse to crank up the volume. Remember my point earlier about how it squashes the signal? It'll actually end up sounding worse if you apply too much limiting. Another point I'd like to make is that if your audio signal is already clipping, going into the limiter, it's not going to sound good on the way out of it. In audio mixing, we have a term for audio that's recorded too hot. We call it re-record that shit. I'm just kidding. There's no term for that. It just simply is what it is. You have to re-record whatever you did. There's no fixing it once it's, it, once it's broken. It's, it's broke. That's it. I'll be discussing clipping and gain staging in my next video. I want to talk more in depth about it, but I just wanted to keep it simple for this video. I'm also going to demonstrate my step-by-step -step process for mixing vocals. If you have any more questions about limiting, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. I'd love to answer your questions. Anyways guys, thank you for your time. Have a good 